So, then let's talk about um, <clears throat> some things that, I guess, myths that uh, mm-hmm. we heard before we went up there. Yes. And we found out basically not to be true. Yep, there were right. a lot of them. Yeah, um, like you're going to get eaten by bears was one of them. <laughs> right. Well, we're just joking, but a lot of people we, did say that. They said we really had to watch out for the bears. And we so took forth. bear spray and bear whistles and bear horns and <laughs> right. bear vaults. <laughs> bear vaults. Big bear bear vaults. vaults. We, had, we, had, yes. we had a lot of bear stuff that we didn't use. Right. There was a, a big discussion right on one of my videos when I talked about taking these bear vaults along, because everything we had read, you know, you needed to be prepared for all of this, but in the end. We never saw a bear in the campgrounds whatsoever. A lot of them alongside the roads, but never in a campground whatsoever. I think that what ends up happening is most of the campgrounds that you end up staying in are pretty close to the highways. Mm-hmm. And so the bears just stay away from all the noise some, and everything. Some of them were patrolled. Some of them even had electric fences around yeah. them. Yeah, the and, Lake and, Louise campground had an electric fence all the way around the, the campground. I, I and think a lot of it comes down to being smart about food. Don't leave your food out on the table, right. um, things like that. Uh, the paneers that we have are really airtight, literally. I mean, today, just opening it on my ride, it was like a vacuum again. But, you know, so it's, but it is what it is. Yeah, so that's one. Um, you know, the bears weren't a big deal. Now, not to say that you shouldn't be prepared yeah. for that, because it, of course, could happen. You should not be stupid. Yeah. Having bear spray is probably a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, we would. I think we would, of course, carry that again. Yeah. And but again, smart about your food. Again. What yeah. you leave laying around. Right. Uh, second thing that I found to not be true, and again, this may have just been the time of year that we were going, but the mosquitoes and bugs... Mm. Um, you know, at least weren't anywhere near as bad as we were thinking they were going to be. You know, we had mosquito netting and spray and all this kind of stuff. Permethrin on all our clothes. Yeah, and well, you know, I did have, the, I had this green shirt that is permethrin treated, and I have to say it did help a great deal. I would, I would definitely take that again. But there just weren't the number of mosquitoes and things that we were expecting. Again, it, it may have been that we were traveling in July. Maybe if we were doing it in May or June, then it yeah, might have been worse. More, but more not that there weren't a billion bugs. That, yeah. Of course, the, 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 yeah, the, yeah. the bikes were evidence of that. But. Yeah, on the highway, of course, you're hitting all kinds of bugs all the time. Yeah, and but, Peter got them in the face because of his windshield, but my, my windshield was covered uh, with bugs, and they were, it was pretty much keeping them off of me for the most part. But yeah, I think we had one bad night at, at Bell 2. Bell 2. Because we were way in the back and it was sort of wet back there. And that it was, was a little creek. We were yeah. back under the pine trees. And but, you know, you just was, get in your tent really fast. I was in a room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were like, what the hell? Yeah, there were no yeah, mosquitoes that's, in that's the, the bar when we were having dinner. We the hey, wait, wait, was nice. Let's be honest, though. They tried to get a room. <laughs> we did. We did. But they yes. just couldn't. Yes. So. We so. would have taken one if there was one available. <laughs> Although they did right. come out at the last minute after everything was they, set up and offered us a room. We said, right. oh, we're good. They we're did because I got really upset with them and but, but, basically uh, made them go out and get, at least, at least offer it to yeah. you. Yes. Yeah. yeah, she was very yeah. nice and very apologetic. But, so. but that right. was fine. We had a great dinner and some drinks and went in the tents and fell asleep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. good. That's fine. Good. Um, see, another myth for me was... Uh, the going over those metal bridges, mm. right? Uh, you know, we had heard that, especially on the 50-50 tires, your bike is really squirrely and, you know, you're going to hate it and all this. And, and, yeah, I mean, the bike does move around a little just bit. Just let it move. Mm. Yeah, you just... Uh, if you stand up, you're fine. Yeah, we, we found out standing up is the best way to go over them. And just like if you're riding on, you know, slippery dirt like we were out riding today, um, then you just let the bike move, and it was absolutely fine. Now, we didn't race over those bridges, though. No, I mean, we no. were going, you know, 35, 40 30. miles an hour or yeah. something, but but still, it, it wasn't don't, a don't big Don't fight deal. it, and just, just go with it, and it's right. fine. All right, and in fact, that brings up, we looking at what kind of tires to bring on this trip. We all decided on the 50-50s, but we also heard a lot of bad things mm-hmm. about how 50-50s handle on the highway and how they, uh, you know, handle in the rain and all this kind of stuff. And again, I, I don't think any of us nope. found that to be true whatsoever. We were riding... Very hot. <laughs> yeah, in the rain. We were riding very quickly. 
uh, cornering very quickly, um, and yeah, they handled pretty well. You know, yeah. And they did just fine. Mine, were, mine were noisy. My front tire, the hiding house, noisy, which everybody said it would be, but mm -hmm. it, it's only noisy between like forty-five and yeah, fifty-five. I mean, I still, so if you I stay still hit my band, front on uh, uh, the yeah. Mita C07. But I mean, it's a knobby. You got to expect it to right. be noisy. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they they're not as competent on the highway as a street tire, mm. yeah. you know. But still, they're yeah. not. They're not bad at all. Yeah. And especially up there, because it's all mostly chip and seal, and that stuff is like sandpaper. Um, so I always felt very sure-footed on those roads. Cool. All right, so anything else you guys have? Gas, as far as gas, gas. Yeah, we couldn't, okay. couldn't find Excellent. gas, and that, that, that turned out not to be a big problem. Yeah, and I, I had mentioned this in one of my previous videos, but they're absolutely correct that, um, for the most part, you're not going to have any problem finding gas whatsoever. If you're stupid, right, and you say think that you're going to run your gas tank down to the very last drop, then yeah, you might have some problems. But if you're smart and you stop, you know, fill up in the morning and then stop at noon and fill up, you know, and then again, just be smart about it, you're not going to have any problem. I think maybe 150 miles or something like that might be the longest stretch yeah, that we went. Yeah, pretty much. You know, taking the octane and, booster was and, probably and a good idea. All yeah. of those bikes that probably easily could do 220, 240 yeah. miles. And, uh, if you had to bring some gas, I mean, we, I just had that one little 30 ounce fuel bottle, mm -hmm. um, just in case you needed right. that extra 10 miles or something. Right. And, and I did bring my one gallon gas can, and you guys have already heard the story how <laughs> I ended up running out of gas in, in South Dakota. <laughs> Um, after all that. Right, right after all that, after carrying it with me for quite a while in Alaska. But now, would I carry the gas cans again? Yeah, I yeah. probably would. I mean, it, it's a good, uh, good safety net, right? And But the water canister I used all the time. We filled it up in the campgrounds yeah. and then brought it back. And it I mean, great. there was, you got to be careful about your GPS. I mean, I have one of the newest uh, 395 LMs from, from Garmin and... Uh, Several times, you know, I have this feature where it's like, you know, up ahead, and I'd put in the gas, and we went by two stations that were closed. I mean, they were derelict. You could tell. I mean, it was like weeds growing up between uh, the pumps and stuff, and it's like, okay. But they had them on there as, as yeah, viable that's stations. Yeah, that's a good point. So, you, can't, you can't completely so don't, rely on don't the GPS. rely on that. Um, but, yeah, if you fill up, you know, smartly, then you'll, you'll be fine. Or if you buy a Ducati that has an eight-gallon tank. Or right. that. <laughs> Or a GS, it has an eight the gallon GS tank. GS or the way. KTM has an eight gallon tank. Yeah. Or a Triumph that gets like 50 something miles to a gallon. <laughs> <laughs> Fair point. 